okay so to kick start I've cut some sheets of old vintage music paper down to around about six inches square so I'm going to be using these um, in the basis of my um, project for today so what I'm going to do first of all before I do anything is I need to paint these so you can tell how old these are look <laughs> excellent stuff so what I'm going to do is I've got to grab so I'm going to grab some uh, Dina Wakely Media Ruby so that's the red paint and I'm just going to put a blob of the red paint just down onto my polypropylene mat here and I've only got this just because I'm using it as a little bit of a um, paint palette I've got some water and I'm just going to water that paint down a little bit but I've also got some indigo blue luscious pigment powder now this is called porcelain so what it basically is it's just a white mica so all I need to do is just to grab a little bit of a wet or damp paintbrush and just put some down onto my craft mat and then just add a little bit of water and that's going to turn into a really kind of shimmery mica paint so you can see the shine on that already and I'm going to kind of mix that in with my red paint and I'm going to turn that red paint from Dina Wakely into a really kind of nice loose metallic red now if I want to add more then all I need to do is just to add a little bit more of that porcelain and then just kind of mix it in until it's absorbed into the paint and the pigment so whatever pigment you've got this porcelain will obviously absorb completely and turn any paint into a beautiful metallic -y, glimmering shiny kind of paint so I'll just put that little brush to one side add a tad more water and then just pick up my paintbrush and then all I'm going to do is just go over the entire sheet with that red paint and obviously it's going to pick up that beautiful mica as well and deposit that down um, into the paint onto the paper. So I'll just put that to one side so I'm going to need two or three sheets of the red like so so just adding that red paint onto there with that mica and I'm going to do like I said I'll probably end up doing three of those and there should be just enough just a little bit more water just to loosen it up a little I'm not going you know exact I'm not going to go mad um, <clears throat> I might just need to add a little bit more paint shake a tiny amount of that porcelain that should do I'll just grab I think I've just blown porcelain mica paint that powder all over my trousers now but what the hell it's Christmas <laughs> If you can't get messy at Christmas, when can you get messy? There we go. Maybe a little bit darker. That's more like it. And then I'm going to let that soak in and dry. So there's our three sheets. Now I also need a green one. So I'm just going to wash off my brush, grab a baby wipe. wipe up that paint easy as that and then this time I'm going to grab some Dina Wakely Media Olive a splodge of that the porcelain mica 
And I'll just rinse off my little mixing brush. Add some water onto there. And then let's get that mixed in. You see how easy it absorbs into the paint. Obviously with it being powder there is a, like a binder in there too. So it does make the paint a little bit thicker which is why I added the water. So a little bit more. Get it a little bit more fluid and that should do us, I think, maybe a little bit more mica. Just to get it a little bit more sparkly. If you've already got obviously mica paint um, then you can do this straight off the bat. You don't need to mix any in. Um, this porcelain goes with any colour because it's obviously clear and will work regardless. Okay, just make sure I've cleaned my brush properly. That looks like it. So I'll grab my next sheet of music paper and then let's pick up that green paint. There we go. When that dries, obviously, that mica will shine through. Perfect. Okay, pop those wet wipes away for a second. And then I need to get all of these coloured sheets all dry. So I'll get them dry, grab my heat gun, and I'll be right back when all four sheets are nice and dry. Okay, so all of my sheets are now dry. Now look at that shine that's on those pages. That's just with adding that mica into the page. And as you can see there, look, there's a nice kind of glint and shimmer on all of the sheets. Now, obviously, if you don't have any of that mica powder, you can use, you know, one of the um, Prima Marketing Glimmer Spritzes or a Glimmer Spray, anything that's got the mica spritz in it that you can just go over the top with. You don't have to mix it in like I've done. It's just one of many, many different ways of doing it. And of course, you can add as much or as little as you want to. See, there's not as much in that one as there is. I mean, look at the shine on that. You've just got that nice kind of glimmer in the background. Okay, so I've got all four of my sheets. So I'm going to bring in my big shots, which I've just got off to one side here. And I've got here my tattered poinsettia bigs die. I don't know if you can see that. It's one of the steel ruled ones. And I'm gonna cut all of these out all at once. Just lay my cutting plates on. I've had my big shot now for, <clears throat> when did I buy it? About 2007. And it's exactly the same now as it's always been. It's never ever failed me once. Brilliant piece of kit. And there we go. So I've got one lot. Two lots, and this is all four sheets all at once. All my little bits are just dropping out there. Cool, so I can put that to one side, and then I keep all of my bits here. So I now should have. A nice <clears throat> green base with a couple of those. Oop, sorry, maybe a larger one there, and then come on, fingers. And then there should be a small yellow centre, or yellow, greenish centre, 
that we can add for our little tattered poinsettia. here. So let's just move that to one side. I'll take that one out. Like so. Put the smaller one in there. Another one. Actually, should that be that the same size? It is the same size, isn't it? Doing this on the fly. Don't you just love it? And then again. And just like that. Nice big kind of poinsettia. So I'll just move those to one side and bring in the next bit. Okay, so I've got a Tim Holtz Ideology Burlap Panel. So I've had this for quite some time. Let's see if we can break our way into it. There we go. Perhaps I should have opened this beforehand. the panel. Okay so we're going to be doing it on this side so I need some texture paste, some white texture paste. So I've got my structure paste from Imagination Crafts. I used this not so long ago for the very first time. I kind of enjoyed it. It was just right. So I'm going to just grab some of that texture paste and I'm going to just add it straight down onto the panel. I'm just tapping it down just to get a little bit of raised texture. Because I don't want it to be just flat on the panel. Because every time you do this, if you do more than one, it's going to look completely different. Maybe a little bit up top, just okay. So I'll drop that spatula into some water, and then I'm going to bring out my heat gun, and I'm going to try and dry this off as best I can, and then I'll be back as soon as I've done that. Okay, so that structure paste is pretty much dry now. So I'm going to start building up a little bit of a background layer. So I'm just going to be using some normal kind of spirit based glue for this, but you could use anything you wanted to. You could use structure gel or anything like that, but I'm not particularly all that bothered about having uh, all the edges all stuck down in the right kind of place uh, or everything down seamlessly. I like the the effect of having it kind of curling up at the edges. So I'm just going to layer down some of these pieces just here in the background. I'm not particularly going mad about placements. I just want to create a kind of backdrop. I even took something in there like so <coughs> and then Grab this bigger one and do that kind of at an angle. Take it up there, maybe. Just stick that down. Another piece of music paper like that. Come on, fingers. And I don't even mind too much if I've not even got the music paper the right way up. 
that'll do nicely for me. So I've also got some Tim Holtz paper dolls because these are just perfect for adding into little projects like this just for a little bit of um, nostalgia. So let's stand him there, get our two little girls. I love these projects because they don't take long to do and I think they can look quite you know, quite cute and effective. I appreciate that I'm covering up most of what I've stuck down, but that's not the point. The point is, it's like a foundation. You don't necessarily all see all of it, but you know it's there. And then take our little, little baby boy, and we can go in just there, like so. Okay, so we've got our little foundation there. Um, I'm probably going to be adding in this in a little while, but let's go back to our poinsettias. Now I could go around all the edges, distressing them and making them darker, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to grab each one and I'm going to stick that down kind of in the corner. Don't mind if it's coming off the edge a little bit. And I'm not going to stick it flat. So let's twist it around. Get it to work in between. And it's just a gradual process of just building these layers up. Moving them around until you're happy. Because I'm only sticking them down in the middle, it means I can fluff these up a little bit later. And I don't mind just moving it. See these can all be lifted up later on to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. If that's what we need, if that's what we want. I'm not going to put the, like, the end, um, like the, the staining pieces in there just yet because I haven't actually decided whether or not I'm actually going to use them. I might actually come back with a little bit of glitter glue Stick another one down there. And then just build up our little poinsettia flowers. And of course, if you've got other poinsettia dyes or flower builders, you can use whatever you want. Don't have to use the same thing I'm using if you want to try and recreate something very similar. That's okay. And then this one. Smaller one just over there. A little tab of glue. So once you've got most of your elements for these cut out or you've decided what you want to put on they don't really take very long at all to build up. Matter of minutes. Okay, so we've got little Robin. So I think I'm going to stand him just up there. Okay, so I need to leave this glue just to sit for a minute or two and then I'm going to come back. Just let that grab, let that sit for a minute or so and then I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so they're pretty much stuck together now. There is still a little bit of movement on them. So I just want to drop in some little golden accents. I've decided not to use those little centers that go with it. Instead I'm going to use some um, gold stickles. So right in the center there I'm just going to make sure that there actually is some of this left in here. I haven't used these this year at all. So I'm just going to add some little dots of gold into the center of each one. Just go around. Of course you could add gems if you want to.
but I found that this is just more than adequate to finish off the look for those poinsettias. So I just want to add a little bit more up here. So I've actually got some more um, Christmas ephemera kind of stuff. So I'm just going to add that little ticket down there. I've got the number 25 which obviously has its own little significance and then we have a special delivery because it's all about the parcels and I'm going to run that just across there like so and I've started to fluff up or curl up some of these little leaves. You could go really to town if you wanted to on that, but it's, I think it's not really gonna need it. So just to finish off, I printed off on my computer um, just the phrase Merry Christmas. I just made a little um, fishtail banner end to it. And all I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of glue underneath there. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to tuck it underneath those leaves and just drop it down there. Of course those leaves you can just pull up if you want to be able to see that a little bit more clearly. Right, let's move that special delivery up a tad. I like how this glue so you can manoeuvre and move it as much as you want. You could actually do it so that 25th was actually just holding that down a little. There. Really quick and easy to do kind of Christmas project. Is that straight? Let's just straighten that up a little bit. Just something you could put out or give as a little gift to somebody just to brighten the place up a little bit. 